Hey, welcome to the next channel. So, a couple of days ago, I was having a chat uh, or a discussion with uh, one of my students uh, discussing about uh, how uh, TCP options are getting parsed in the Linux kernel source. Uh, and uh, as a part of that, uh, I was uh, having a look of the API. I thought, uh, let me discuss in this episode so that it will be useful in case if you are touching any of this. Uh, 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 places uh, you know in case you need to inject your own uh, specific custom uh, TCP options or stuff like that so if you see the UDP uh, protocol headers and the TCP protocol headers they are going to be like a fixed size header so in the sense like you get fixed size fields so whereas in the case of TCP options it is a sort of uh, dynamic TLV based uh, you know arrangement so this is what I have discussed in one of my earlier episodes about uh, you know protocol uh, uh, types of uh, protocol uh, you know header sizes so like a fixed size or a dynamic uh, size stuff like this so if you see a sample uh, wireshark capture uh, like this uh, so i have this uh, sample wireshark capture uh, and if you see uh, if you notice uh, the tcp header so you can see here uh, once the header is over there are certain packets which is going to have this uh, additional options uh, records so if you click the options record you can see here it has this kind length and uh, you know value and stuff like that so this is what is a typical uh, tlv arrangement so you can take any uh, few samples like this uh, let me see some other uh, sample i'm just yeah so you can see here there is another place again uh, you have this uh, tcp options as well. so this is how it is uh, uh, been uh, populated so along with your fixed uh, you know tcp header uh, which is like uh, you know 20 bytes or so and it has this additional options uh, you know uh, header as it. so in the options header it has totally you know uh, nop nop and then it has this uh, uh, you know kind of timestamp option as it. so if you uh, correlate this specific code in the linux kernel source uh, there's an api uh, which does the same uh, since uh, it is a question of uh, parsing the tcp option so uh, you have to search somewhere in the rx flow so essentially the ipv4 stack of uh, you know rx flow is going to be uh, ip input and somewhere it is going to link towards uh, you know tcp input because this is something you are doing in the tcp you know layer so you can see here uh, this is the api which does parsing of the same and i i was like confused whether to classify this episode under skb data structure or uh, you know tcp header data structure because it is not even related to tcp header uh, struct tcp header so i thought uh, later uh, you know let me uh, put this uh, under the category as uh, you know uh, as a linux kernel networking subsystem because this is more or less as a generic uh, you know networking subsystem part so that down the lane somewhere you will touch this uh, portion because uh, this is not specific uh, related to skb this is not anything related to you know ip header or tcp header this is more related about uh, you know networking subsystem is small part of networking subsystem so if you go here it has this uh, api and uh, you can see here it is in ipv4 net ipv4 uh, tcp underscore input dot c and you can see it's a prototype over here uh, net and tcp dot h so if you little scroll up uh, you know maybe this is the place you get the struct tcp header let us see or else it is in a different place i'm not sure struct tcp header yeah it's in the same place yeah you can see here it's in the line number uh, 24 so you can uh, go here and if you go up you can see oh okay this is in uh, include uapi uh, linux and tcp.h versus uh, uh, this specific uh, API TCP parse options, uh, you can see here uh, TCP parse options, it's in the line number 427 of uh, include uh, net uh, tcp.h, whereas the struct TCP header is uh, defined in uh, include uh, UAPI uh, Linux uh, tcp.h. So, some, sometime down the line, uh, this uh, path of the, you know, this specific, uh, you know, uh, uh, structure uh, definition have changed if you notice uh, sometime around three or four years ago versus now as 
so if you go back to the source it is uh, fairly easy to understand uh, exactly this is what i was having a discussion because he need to it is a situation that he need to implement his own custom uh, tcp options for a specific uh, reason uh, so that uh, he need to write a sort of parser so that he gets the tcp options and then he will parse and then he will uh, you know uh, maintain a small uh, table and uh, he will update you know something beyond that so, so i'm not sure whether i can share his project or not but i thought uh, it's interesting to discuss in this video about uh, what is exactly we are dealing about so what happens is essentially you can see here uh, skb is uh, uh pulling out the tcp header and finally if you go down you can see here it has all this uh, cases uh, various uh, types of tcp options which are pre registered you can see here tcp opt mss tcp opt window and timestamp and uh, so on so on so on so if you go to the wireshark you can see here this is related to uh, timestamp option and its uh, tlb uh, the identifier is 8 you can see here kind is 8 and then length is 10 uh, and then it has this you know specific value the entire record is around 10 bytes so this is the reason the length is set as 10 bytes over here so if you highlight here it is showing totally 10 bytes you can see here below in the wire shark it is showing as 10 bytes and if you see that is what it is uh, populated as uh, hexadecimal 0a so this is what exactly happening around so this is a typical uh, tlv record so you see here uh, the timestamp option uh, let us go back to the code so you can see here uh, uh, tcp opt timestamp so you can see uh, where exactly it has been defined so let us click this identifier and we can see in uh, it is in the same include net tcp.h and over here you can see here tcp options various predetermined a uh, types or kind is uh, defined over here so you can see various identifiers uh, you can see uh, no operation or nop is just a padding it is in uh, uh, it has uh, this identifier or kind id is 1 and uh, eol is 0 and mss is 2 and so on so on so on in the case of uh, experimental it is uh, 254 in the case of this timestamp it is 8 so this is what exactly you can notice you can see here it has been defined as 8 and this is what exactly you can see in the wireshark capture also and in the case of nop you can see here its type is 1 since it doesn't have any other uh, you know uh, parameter or uh, you know values associated with that kind of identifier it's just a single byte you can see here nop nop and then it has this next is a full record so nop is like you know just a placeholder or it's the padding as you know defined in this source so if you go back once again the implementation so here you can see somewhere uh, you know they are pulling out this pointer and uh, this is where essentially what happens is you have your uh, you know specific uh, value of your uh, uh, you know the uh, record the value of the record so you can see here you have this uh, value over here in the case of this specific example mss you can see here the ptr uh, they are uh, pulling out the pointer and then uh, they are getting the you know um, two byte uh, our uh, data out of the same as it or uh, 16 bits uh, data out of the same so that's the location i believe uh, you have the uh, you know fields you know value and you can see here uh, the length has uh, you know uh, Uh, pulled over here uh, in the case of like uh, you know TLV as well. so if you see here it has this length and you can see NOP it is just not doing anything it's just you know uh, incrementing and I mean it is just uh, you know uh, you know doing a continue of the loop so that it can skip onto the next uh, you know TCP options as well. so this is what exactly happening uh, over here and you can see here uh, the kind uh, you can see the switch statement opcode uh, is the actual uh, kind of this uh, specific tcp option so it is captured in uh, opcode and you can see here opcode is pulled out from the same uh, pointer and then uh, the pointer's uh, position is incremented because the pointer is uh, just currently pointing towards the uh, opcode and then uh, next to the opcode is the length identifier and next after that it is going to be your uh, you know uh, the value field as such so this is how it is getting uh, 
you know parsed in each situation the parsing differs because based on the situation you have to handle the same so in the case of uh, timestamp you can see here it is just having some two uh, values so, so it is having that uh, you know corresponding code you can see here uh, pointer and it is pulling out the first value and then it is uh, doing an incrementation of four bytes uh, and it is uh, pulling out the second uh, 32 bit uh, value out of the same so essentially it is uh, you know uh, four bytes and uh, four bytes as so this is what exactly you can see in the wireshark as well so you can see here it is uh, totally you know the length is uh, 10 bytes in that uh, two bytes are allocated for length field because this is not a huge uh, you know record this is the reason the length field is just one byte in the case of udp header you can see the udp headers uh, size uh, you can go to wireshark or uh, let us uh, let us not disturb this capture let us go here udp header if you go images so the point is uh, what i want to uh, share or give knowledge is so uh, when it comes to architecting a protocol these are the factors which comes into the picture why the length is some at some places two bytes why the length at some places is just one byte it, in this case of tcp options you are not going to use a huge you know uh, record it is just you know an, uh, it is just a limitation just use one byte because you still have around 256 uh, uh, you know bytes of data because uh, one byte is you know 256 so uh, uh, is the value for one byte as so minus two bytes if you take it uh, for kind and length uh, uh, you know bytes uh, still you have like uh, 254 bytes uh, left so in the case of udp it is holding the entire payload assume a case like you have uh, you know big uh, mtu sized packets jumbo frames or something like that in that case uh, the length can have the full uh, you know um, uh, you know it can take the full advantage of both the bytes so that is why it has this uh, length field which is two bytes whereas in the case of also in the case of ip header you can see here not only udp header you can take a case like ip header you can see here images yeah you can see the specifications uh, ip headers uh, total length which is the total length of ip header and uh, transport header like udp tcp or icmp or anything like sctp plus payload it has total length of two bytes as such so this is the reason uh, the length is just one byte and then it is uh, followed by it has this uh, four and four uh, you know byte value so there are two values in the case of uh, you know uh, timestamp options so just don't understand uh, just don't come to a conclusion tlv is always meant for just you know one record in this case it is uh, totally two records are encoded within the same uh, single record and it has been uh, you know passed across uh, the network assets so when you write a parser you have to keep in mind so which is the reason based on the type of this specific tlv record you know what they are doing is they are parsing in this case in this way whereas in the case of tcp options window they are parsing in a different way whereas in the case of tcp mss they are parsing in a different way whereas in the case of nop and uh, you know uh, other options they are doing in a different way so hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching this video in case if you have any specific questions related about uh, linux kernel network stack uh, you can uh, put across your uh, queries uh, down in youtube uh, uh, comments uh, and also so as a part of redundancy because in some uh, countries and in some uh, companies uh, you know uh, youtube is uh, blocked so i started uh, posting my videos as well in uh, daily motion and as well in case if you go to linux channel website because in case if this uh, specific video is uh, you know still you cannot watch it live in the online what you can do is you can go to videos and uh, you can go to this section called as video index and then you can get the full view of every possible uh, option so that you can even download it via google drive or you can even download some videos vi directly via http and then you can get the entire tarball when you uncompress this tarball you will get a description file a text file like youtube description and then you get that mp4 uh, uh, file with which you can uh, watch the same so this provides the full freedom so that you are no, no longer restricted in terms of you know uh, watching only via youtube or in case if youtube is blocked or uh, 
there is some kind of issue or service is down or in case suddenly one day suddenly it has blocked you know the linux channel so i need to think about the redundant options available so that this is a knowledge share uh, you know channel but still having said that we never know what is going to happen in the future so you can go here and at the same time you can also go to any specific uh, you know video title and below also you can see the same options uh, and uh, sometime down the lane i'm also thinking uh, in terms of sharing across uh, through torrent and ftp and uh, even through mirrors and stuff like that so currently i'm in uh, uh, having some issues in terms of sharing the same via torrent but uh, i'm okay to do via google share and as well as uh, daily motion and other platforms besides youtube uh, uh, you know channel as such so hope you guys loved watching this video guys have a nice day take care bye bye